Welcome back fellow mobile gamers, my name is Nimble Thor, and today it finally happened, the Elder Scrolls Blades release both on Android and iOS, the long-awaited Elder Scrolls RPG for mobile is finally here. The download links can be found in the description box down below, so let's have a look at what this game actually has to offer. First of all though, yes it can be played both in landscape and portrait mode, which is great to see, and also yes it does utilize the full screen of an 18 to 9 or an 18.5 to 9 screen, like that found on for example my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Now, if you're downloading this game just as this video goes live, there is a good chance that you will see some small hiccups. I experienced that, and you do need to download 874 megabyte extra in an additional download, even after the game has been installed and you've logged in. Once you get through that, though, you get to pick from one of 10 different classes. I, of course, had to go with the Nord race here, but each of those classes have some certain bonuses, like, for example, extra health generation. With the Nord I went with, we have 15% frost resistance, and we get to deal 5% extra damage with great swords, battle axes, and war hammers. I went into a quest here because that is how you, you play the game. You go from quest to quest. Oh, and you try to defeat all the opponents. This seems to be some sort of training match where we have to defeat Henrik Seven Swords. So let's talk a bit about the UI here. It's pretty simple. We can simply tap and hold the screen and then release to do a normal attack like so. And we have to time it correctly to deal a bit of extra critical damage. Uh, then on the left side here, we have a shield that we can hold up. And then we have special abilities that we can use on the right side. We also have magic attacks. I haven't unlocked any of those just yet, but we can use those on the left side as well. So whenever we level up, we get to choose between upgrading Stamina or Magicka. And Magicka is used for the spells, and Stamina is used for the abilities, such as the one I'm using right now, right there. There you go, dealing 46 in damage. So what do we have to do here? Block right before an attack to prevent damage and stun the attacker. So that's what we have to do. So let's do that properly. There we go. That was the actual training release when the circle is full for critical hits. See, we knew that already. So that battle training was relatively easy, and we got a Steel Dagger from that. Most of these quests, though, actually have us go into these really long dungeons that are freaking awesome, where we can just free roam and we can do whatever we want to do. We are in a dungeon, though, so it's not like we can run around a huge open world, but we are free to run back and forth in whichever direction we want to, and we can even find secret rooms with hidden treasures, which just feels great. It has that real, true Skyrim feeling, and these treasures do take time to open, by the way. They are loot boxes. Sadly, I know some of you guys are going to be really disappointed about that. At the moment, though, most of them take only five seconds or up to three hours to unlock. I'll go show you guys one of those loot boxes right now. And as you guys can see, it actually does take some time to load these different menu screens, which is kind of frustrating as well. So the game could definitely use some optimization. But here we go. We have a silver chest that's about to open. We can spend, obviously, some premium currency to open it immediately. So let's do that right now, just so you guys can see what we may be able to get from some of these silver chests here. At the moment, by the way, we're going through some story missions that has us help rebuild the city. So we definitely need all these iron ingots, these limestones. All of that is really useful, the copper as well. And we got an iron shield, which we sadly already have, so we can't really can't really get much use of that item. So now we can choose to open another silver chest, or we can go for the wooden chest. Let's say we go for the wooden chest, and even though that one is only gonna take five seconds, let's head out here and into another quest instead. Rebuild the smithy or kill all goblins. I say we go for this one. Let's go into some actual combat We're gonna be able to get an imperial banner. That's kind of nice I guess that's something we can decorate our town with once we're once we're back at town again There are also some endless dungeons by the way called the abyss and more gameplay elements I'm sure will be added later on. We do also have some sort of PvP arena It's still too early to say how exactly that one will work. We don't know yet, it hasn't released yet, and there's a good chance that it will be slightly paid to win, sadly, because of course we can pay to not only unlock loot boxes immediately, but we can also pay to simply straight out buy legendary loot boxes with legendary items in them. Now, as you guys can see, once we're in these dungeons here, I'm actually experiencing a bit of lag here on my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, which is frustrating because that means that there's a good chance that, well, hopefully this game is just not optimized yet, but there is a good chance that it does mean that you won't be able to run this on older phones, or maybe, hopefully, it's just my phone that's kind of acting up a bit right now. But this is what I'm talking about. We clearly have to go in this direction, but we can choose to go over here as well. And with a bit of luck, there might have been something in here that we could use. There weren't anything in that room. Let's go over here to check, just to see that maybe something here. Nope, an empty cave. 
which worries me, <laughs> whereas the guy was supposed to be in that cave, but nothing else in here. But we are free to roam as we want, and that exploration aspect is a fun part of the game. Now, in terms of the controls, they actually work surprisingly okay, so we can either tap to move somewhere, simply tapping to move over here, for example, or we can use the left and right side joysticks, which uh, simply appear whenever we tap the left or right side of the screen. In my experience so far, the left side joystick definitely feels the best, and then there is a right side joystick, but it's not sensitive enough, and I know we can change the sensitivity settings but I have already done that and it's still not sensitive enough so what I like to do is to simply use the left side joystick and then simply hold anywhere on the right side of the screen not use the right side joystick but just hold anywhere on the screen to look around like so because that is uh, way more sensitive so do we have to go in this direction I think we're going in the right direction oh and we leveled up as well that's awesome so let's go check out what sort of rewards we got from leveling up here so we got 10 extra health and we got one more skill point now do we want to go for magicka or stamina I have gone for stamina so far I think I'm just gonna keep upgrading stamina, honestly. And we got some gold as well, because stamina just seems to be the most useful uh, with a Nord character. I don't really want to use too much magic. We can upgrade our spells over here, though, but we also have perks and we have abilities. And now I really want to go for either the dodging strike, which means that the fighter instantly dodges to evade up to 85 damage, then strikes back. Seems rather helpful. Uh, we also have a shield bash, though. The fighter first blocks with the shield, then slams it into the enemy, dealing... 36 extra bashing damage, a shield is required. Um, I say we go for the dodging strike for now, and with that one, let's equip it and go back here and try that one out in the next combat versus one of these goblins. Let's take this guy over here and let's try to use it. Oh, it has to charge up first, but here we go. Let's see. Oh, oh wait, it didn't deal any damage. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I did something wrong there. Let's try that. Let's try that once more. Let's go over here to the next goblin. Uh, and maybe I miss, maybe I just misunderstood it. Let's try it again. We will do a normal attack here, and then we're gonna do this one. Oh, we did actually bash forward and dealt 42 damage. So it isn't really a super strong attack, but I guess it's good at dodging attacks from the opponent if you can time that correctly. I really want to find a chest somewhere, but uh, I'm not sure if we have chests in every single level. But it would be kind of cool to find one though. Not that I don't have any more chests to wait for, because as you guys remember, we're waiting for one of them to open, which is probably ready right now actually let's go check out the status of that one it should have only taken five seconds so here we go let's open it and we got two normal items another iron shield <laughs> i mean okay nice i guess but how many iron shields do we really need we also do have a limited amount of space in our inventory so we actually don't want too many of those right now before we go back to the before we go back to town and sell them we got a hide helmet though i don't think we have a helmet on us let's go check that out just a sec here in the character. All right, so in here we can see that we've got equipped our iron war axe, our iron shield, and now a hide helmet as well. Look at us over here, we're looking stellar. Let's go back here now with this equipped, we should have a bit more of armor, making it a bit more easy to get through the rest of this dungeon. So what's my conclusion gonna be about the early access version of the Elder Scrolls Blades? Well, it's a fun game, and although it's heavily not optimized at the moment, I am enjoying the game, and I'm sure it will only get better from here on. I am genuinely concerned, though, about how pay-to-win the PvP aspect of the game will be, but the single player so far is very enjoyable, and the PvP hasn't even released yet. But with those very expensive legendary loot boxes that you can buy for real-life money, I do expect that it will be highly pay-to-win, sadly. Let me know what you think about the Elder Scrolls Blades, though, in the comment section down below, and now it's time for the mobile gaming news of the day, which is that the survival MMO Life After by NetEase has now earned $125 million in total since it was released back in late 2018. Now, since the game only recently launched globally, 97% of that revenue still comes from China. But let's see if Nexon ever wants to release their survival MMO, Durango Wildlands. I mean, clearly, there's lots of potential, lots of money in this market, so I don't get why they have chosen to stay in soft launch with that game for nearly two years now. But I digress. I guess that's an entire discussion for an entirely other day. For now, though, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe if you're new around here. And until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.